I'd like to show you the polypainting technique one more time, but this time on a metallic object such as the character's sword. Once again, I'm going to color in the entire sword in black. Then I'll choose an olive drab color for the first layer of base, and that's going to cover the entire sword. I'm also going to use the polish B brush, make sure I turn off my Z add, so I'm just dealing with the RGB. So what I'm looking to do is just a very gentle spray painting pattern throughout the entire sword, just to lay in the base color. But I'm going to continuously build on top of that, uh, whether it's the leather being a bit more of brown gray, um, or if it's the end cap, which is a bit more of a copper color. I'll begin building up the layers by switching the color for that particular object, such as the straps that go around the handle. I'll work with somewhat of a taupe color. But I'll also use that same color throughout the sword in various areas. So in this case on the leather handle, I'll just gently hit it a little bit with that nice taupe gray color. It ends up building up a really nice, rich, almost realistic feel. Um, and the key to it is don't add too much. You don't want to build up too much paint because then you're just going to change the entire color tone to looking exactly like that. But you can see here how I'm hitting just the highlighted areas of the stitching with that gray color. And it not only makes it pop, but when everything is finished later on with the full dry brush feel, uh, it's going to take on almost like a worn feeling uh, to the painting. So once again, I carry that color throughout the entire sword in different areas. Some elements will take on more color. Uh, other areas, I'm just basically introducing it just very gently within uh, that pattern. I'm also using a scratched line alpha, which gives me a little bit more of a worn effect especially when I'm dealing with worn leather. Here I'll brush over the leather straps and do it in a horizontal or vertical pattern depending on which way your model is facing so that it's following the grain of the actual straps around the handle. I also pay special attention to the edges because the edges are right next to the shadow area so I want those to pop. Now doing brass and shiny gold is, is a lot of fun with this technique because you just keep working on certain areas and it's almost as though you're burnishing it or taking off the patina and it helps to really build up the shine it's amazing how quickly you get a very realistic finish to the texture this way so finally for the end cap of the sword uh, this I want to look a bit more of a copper color metal that has been very oxidized so it has somewhat of a green patina on it and then I want to scratch back uh, and bring out some of that copper tone and in some cases the, the real highlights will be a bit more of a brassy tone. So the way I do that is just working in reverse. I start out with the green patina and then I switch to a nice rusty red color and I start bringing that into the certain areas where I want the wear to definitely be. Then I change my color tone to somewhat of a lightish brown yellow color and I start hitting the highlighted areas both in the rivets, the outer rim of the rivets, and also of course the edges of the metal. I'm doing this with the scratched alpha again, but I'm also going to focus on actually adding that scratch pattern now into the very hard edges, such as the bottom of the nose cone. Now for the stitches, you can approach it one of two ways. You could, of course, just dry brush across the stitches, but I personally also like to take my time and go individually on the different stitches because from time to time they'll tend to get lost in the actual sculpt and I may even turn on Z add at this point and even go switch over to a clay tubes brush just so that I can enhance the sculpt while I'm doing the poly paint. It's definitely a labor of love but you need to take your time with it and as I said earlier 
always experiment, always try different tools. Uh, so find out which ones are yours and kind of stick with them, you know, try to see how far you can push just a limited number of tools and you'll find that your sculpts will go a lot faster because you'll really know how to use those brushes really, really well.